Uh, after the two excellent presentations that we've had on general aspects of litigation, uh, um, I'll be focusing a little bit on, you must have heard of Bilski a few times today. Um, I look at some cases which are post Bilski in various forums and see how they have dealt with the issues raised in Bilski. I mean, this being a hub of uh, electronic and software industry, um, I thought that will be quite useful. Um, first of all, you know, historically speaking, uh, when patent laws first came up, it was about over 200 years back. Uh, at that time, you know, if you think about it, you only had mechanical devices or chemicals. I mean, you had agricultural machinery, or you had soaps, oils, paints, like that. Then the entire field of electronics and software and mathematics and algorithms, none of these things existed at that time. So the patent laws, uh, you know, as conceived at that time, you know, primarily, you know, uh, Jefferson was a motivating force behind that. Uh, uh, they were geared towards mechanical and electrical invention. I mean, sorry, mechanical and chemical inventions. Um, in fact, you know, for those of you who, have, who will have the opportunity to visit a place like Washington, you go to Jefferson's uh, uh, home, you'll see the kind of interesting devices he had. Some of them, even now, they work. I mean, a huge doorway like this, you open one door, the other one also opens purely by pulleys and ropes and all that. So he was a very mechanical-oriented person. Uh, years later, you know, we had the only U.S. president who ever had a patent, a very unlikely president, that was Abraham Lincoln. It was not Carter or uh, Jefferson or something. That was, again, for something in a, in a boat. So these are all mechanical uh, devices. And of course, people were working on oils and, and all that, so there were a lot of chemical process. So the way the laws were written were geared towards, and that kind of kept reflecting. I mean, it's kind of the way, like, Microsoft Windows evolved. You know, any time there was a problem, you, there was a new patch. Never did uh, somebody get an opportunity to go back and start from scratch. And that's, that's, the, that's been the history of, uh, uh, you know, what is useful patentable subject matter is. And so the, uh, the section 101 of the statute still seems to be either mechanical or chemical oriented. And we are trying to fit this whole electrical and software and algorithm technologies to these uh, uh, constructs. And, uh, but, uh, but if you look at the future, we are moving more towards algorithms. I mean, even now, like if you look at a device like an automobile, wh why do we use a steering? I mean, the only thing you, you need the steering is to transmit signals. And, and you, cannot, you can see that the day is not far off when even the steering will be like a push button or something where you move your finger. Because that's all you need. I mean, you don't need the, uh, unfortunately, we are stuck in the past, and, and so is the patent law. I mean, most of the things are going to be on a, uh, on a chip where an algorithm is run. So the more, more it's uh, it, you know the system if it keeps track and keep follows the the, the inventive and innovative process that's taking place in the world, uh, you know patent law should be reflecting that, and this is kind of an attempt. I mean, and and the problems that uh, are discussed in Bilski are, are right in the, in the in the center of this kind of a thinking. Does the claim subject matter? fall within these four uh, constructs, process, machine, manufacture, that seems, that seems to be the test. And um, again, we discussed a, a fair amount about business methods back in a previous session. Uh, in essence, Bilski, the, the claim covered some kind of a risking, I mean, a hedging of risks in a commodity trading context. <clears throat> and. Uh, after that, the, 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 when the Federal Circuit, this appellate court, when it took it up, it came up with this, you know, they, they just went back to the words in the statute. Is, is it tied to a particular machine coming from the mechanical angle? Or does it transform an article into a different, coming from the chemical angle? Okay, they, they, they limited every invention to either these two, you know, ways of analysis. 
And uh, when Bilski went up to the Supreme Court, they, what they said was, okay, that machine or transformation test, it's a useful test, but not the only test. You know, you can have other tests. And uh, so long as it uh, satisfies the basic statutory class, uh, and if, if people remember, we all were into, uh, for a long time, we were into you know, concrete, useful, and tangible. That was a, that's the test. I mean, so they kind of threw everything, threw those three words out, and now it became machine or transformation. And that's not the only test, but, but you know, that can be the starting point. That's what the uh, patent office basically uh, interpreted the Supreme Court uh, 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 you know, Supreme Court decision and issued a set of guidelines. Basically, they said that machine or transformation test still is a test, but but that is just a starting point. So the examiners right now, what they do is they apply the machine or transformation test. If it passes that test, well and good. Otherwise, they throw it back to the applicant. And now you, it's your opportunity to show why it's not abstract. Kind of a negative uh, uh, way of dealing with the same issue. But, but that seems to be the, and, and most examiners seem to be following that. So um, uh, basically, you know, first uh, apply that test. If it passes, well and good. Otherwise, you know, throw it back to the applicant to provide arguments why it should be patentable. Okay, now, um, one of the cases that uh, dealt with this issue was uh, Research Triangle Corporation versus Microsoft. Here, the claim dealt with uh, uh, what's called half toning. It's, it's an image processing. Uh, basically, a set of pixels that are on the screen are compared against a, a, a blue mask, a, a set of pixels that have been created based on an earlier algorithm. And based on that, it's, it's, you know, a certain decision is made. Uh, now, the, the lower court, the, the district court, which is the lowest court which deals with the, the trial court basically, found that the claim did not satisfy 101, satisfies the, uh, but the, the federal circuit, the appellate court reversed that. They, 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 they went back to the root of uh, why we had this abstract subject matter from a historical standpoint, and, and they found, out, found that this, there was nothing abstract in this, this particular half-toning for a process to be claim for, for a process claim to be found invalid, uh, this disqualifying character should exhibit itself so manifestly. That means they wanted it to be so abstract that it overrides the basic, you know, necessity for that particular provision itself. Basically, from a historical standpoint, why why it, why that test was even there. So they wanted it. So so it was uh, kind of a pendulum swung a little bit uh, towards a more realistic. Uh, position. Um, uh, first, the invention presents functional and palpable application. They found they, they came with, to it from an application standpoint. There was a clear, tangible application that could be seen. And in this particular context, see, from from looking at these cases, you would realize that uh, a lot of it is uh, highly contextual. In that this particular pattern. One saving grace was that there were other claims which had uh, machine components. They, they kind of uh, imputed those to the claim at issue. So there were claims which required physical components, like a film, a printer, a memory, etc. So that helped a little bit. Uh, and, and there were specific applications or improvements that was mentioned in the specification. Uh, and, and you know, while there were algorithms and formula, uh, it, you know, even though they were algorithms, that did not prevent it from, you know, uh, passing the uh, abstract idea threshold. Now, one thing that uh, uh, we can take away is that, you know, uh, presence of, you know, if there are physical components, try to put that into the claims. It may not be in, in all in one claim, but have claims which, uh, um, of course, hindsight is twenty twenty, but at least as of now, uh, that seems to be the way in which the appellate court is moving towards. Um, and then discuss, if possible, some things about uh, the marketplace and about what is happening with the related background information about the technology itself. That seems to be helping. So if, you know, if in case uh, you 
think that there's a possibility that this issue may rise, you know, describe the background information a little bit more carefully. <clears throat> Draft at least a few dependent claims having physical prop properties, uh, physical components, then uh, provide at least one embodiment in which the process is tied to a processor. If there is an algorithm, then describe real-world applications for the algorithm. Uh, provide contextual information. These are some of the tips that you can get from this one case. Now, that was a federal circuit ca case, and then now we come to a district court, which is our basic trial-level court. Uh, this is from the uh, Central District of California. Um, there seems to be a series of transactions back and forth. I mean, internet is used, you know, receiving media. It's about an advertisement and how to charge uh, uh, a, a potential advertiser for an advertisement based on how much it is used and what, how, how, much, how important it is. Uh, in this case, the, the court found no machine, no transformation, and it found the whole thing to be abstract. Now, uh, what they said was that the exchange is carried over the internet per se uh, did not uh, you know, uh, make it uh, a machine. You know, even though you are using password, activity law, the patent was still, uh, uh, patent still discloses an abstract, abstract idea. If the claimed invention here were patentable, it would preempt use of this in all fields. Basically, uh, it will preempt the use of this technique even without a computer. Even a normal human transactions back and forth could be preempted. That was the view of this court, applying Bilski to these now, this is another case. Uh, this is from the Board of Appeals. This is uh, basically, this is an appellate board where uh, uh, appeals against an examiner's rejection is taken to. This is one of the Board of Appeals. Uh, basically, based on a, uh, 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 some information, a graphic display is created. And and you know this is again about a financial transaction and asset value and stuff like that. And based on the zone in which uh, uh, that 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 display uh, existed on the computer, one could make a decision about uh, whether to make uh, make an option, make a, you know buy an option. So so here, if you look at it, of course there is a display, but that display is an integral part of what we are trying to do. It's not simply a display to, to show something. Now, a trader is actually going to make a decision based on where the display is. So you can see some kind of a connection between what the, uh, uh, what, what the invention is trying to achieve and the display itself. So, so in other words, the display is an integral part of that, uh, that invention. That's, that seems to be what we can Basically, the board reversed the examiner's rejection that the display is re uh, and found that uh, the display is reasonably broadly construed to be a computer display and an actually a necessary element. Without that specific display, you cannot practice the invention. It's, 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 uh, so it was found to be uh, patentable subject matter under you know, the standards set forth in Bill's scheme. <clears throat> now, another a similar display type of uh, uh, an invention, except that you know this display simply provided uh, information about about a skill level. So, in, in other words, uh, certain skill level information uh, for for uh, for a particular activity uh, is displayed, and 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 it's simply left on the on the computer screen. Now, in this context. Aside from the fact that a computer is used to display, uh, you know, pretty much everything can be, uh, uh, you know, done using human intervention, using the human mind. So the, the display itself did not form an integral part of that uh, inventive activity. It was just some display of information. So that was a conclusion from this, this ex parte Fleas case. So here it was found to be uh, ineligible uh, because uh, it was simply a post-solution activity. Okay, so uh, it's it's you know it, it can be a little bit confusing to make sense of all this, but in in some way what comes out is that is there some kind of uh, tie-up between what you're trying to achieve and and the use of the computer itself? 
So that's where you can kind of try and draw a line. I mean, it, uh, it's still very fuzzy. So in terms of uh, um, claim drafting, as uh, Mr. Stoll was saying in the morning, I mean, uh, essentially it's a drafting exercise. Now, I mean, that is, uh, if, if you just say it's a drafting exercise, I would think that it trivializes the role of all of us practitioners. Uh, I would look at it a little bit more, uh, 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 you know, uh,